welcome everybody. I saw people joining from South America, so good morning to you. Some people here in Cyprus where I am, so good morning to you. Uh, and good afternoon and good evening to everybody else from all over the world. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, the webinar uh, I did a couple of weeks ago focused on the productive skill of writing, but today we're going to uh, look at uh, the receptive skill of, uh, of listening. And maybe uh, we think that the term active listening um, is, is, is maybe a bit of a, a, a paradox uh, because we think of listening as, as not being particularly active. Uh, but of course, the best listeners are uh, indeed active listeners. So we're going to have a think today about what active listening actually is, uh, and probably more importantly, um, how do you do it and how do we get our, uh, our students to do it? Um, so those of you who don't know me, my name's uh, Peter Lucantoni. That's uh, uh, an Italian surname. My dad was Italian, but my mum is English. Uh, I've been working in ELT for all of my uh, working life, more than 40 years. Uh, I'm currently Professional Learning and Development Manager for Cambridge University Press and Assessment in the MENA region. Uh, and as I'm sure many of you know, I'm also an author for Cambridge University Press and Assessment um, with Introduction to English as a Second Language, Cambridge IGCSE as a Second Language, and a new book uh, which I've co-authored uh, with my friend and colleague Matt Elman uh, called From Teacher to Trainer. Okay, hey, so what are we going to do today? We're going to have a think about uh, what listening actually is, and we're going to talk about the uh, principles of listening, not all of the principles of listening, but some of the principles of listening, possibly the, the principles that are the most important for us uh, as teachers and, of course, for our learners. Uh, we're going to talk about what active listening is, and very importantly, uh, have a look at some practical examples of active listening, which you can take into your classrooms, uh, and finally, uh, we'll be making some conclusions. As we did last time when I was talking to you about writing, uh, I want to begin with a three, two, one uh, activity uh, just to get you thinking uh, about our topic today. Um, you don't need to reply uh, immediately. I, this is just a thinking activity. So please don't write anything in the chat box, uh, but just make some notes uh, upstairs. Um, and then um, I'll ask you for some feedback in, in, in about 30 seconds. So the first thing I want you to do is just to think of three things that you know about active listening. So don't write anything, just think, and I'll give you about 30 seconds just to have a think. Three things you know about active listening. Hey, time's up. Who wants to be brave? Who wants to be the first person? Asma's very, very, very honest. I don't know any. That's great. That's good to know. So hopefully you'll learn something during the presentation today. Anybody else? What do you know about active listening? Uh, Molukan says it's hearing and understanding. Somebody else talks about comprehension, understanding, attention, feedback, proper response, getting students actively engaged, engaging the listener. Yeah, loads of brilliant responses coming in. Excellent. Somebody mentions music. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. I get far too many responses for me to, to be able to read them all, but that's great. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to my number two. And I want you now to think about challenges your students face with classroom listening. So again, very short time. Just think. Please don't write anything. 20 seconds this time. Two challenges that your students face with classroom listening. 20 seconds. Don't write anything in the chat box, not yet. You're writing in the chat box, don't write, not yet. <laughs> okay, go for it. Now you can write in the chat box. Yeah, I, I, there's no way I can possibly follow. There's so many things coming in, which is brilliant. The speed, distractions, difficulty of understanding, connected sounds, spelling, interesting, missing information, boredom, listening, less attention span, speed, again, distraction. Okay, I, I can't keep up with everything. That, 
absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, stop. Stop on that one. Let's move on to the last one. I want you now to think of one tip for other teachers about listening. I'm just going to give you 15 seconds to think. Please don't write anything in the chat box. Hold off. Okay, fire away, go for it. Pre-teaching, restating, podcasts, music, somebody says again, empathy, silence, activating schemata, a bit like we're doing now, yeah. Providing students background information. Okay, same idea, lead in, yeah, okay. Lovely ideas coming in. Hopefully, if you haven't written anything in the chat box, you're, you're able to read these and uh, uh, maybe take a note. Uh, of, of what's being uh, written in the chat box. Okay, great, thank you so much. Really nice start to our uh, chat today. Obviously, all of you have already got some great ideas about listening uh, and, uh, and, and active listening. So let's begin with our uh, first question, which is what is listening? So I'm going to show you uh, in just a minute, six pictures, and I'm going to show you some words as well. And what I'd like you to do not in the chat box, please do not write in the chat box. You can make a note yourselves um, at home or work wherever you are. And I want you to match the six pictures with uh, the words that you're going to see. Now, just to, to make this a little bit more difficult, I'm going to give you six pictures, but eight words. So there are two words uh, which you don't need to, to use, two words which are uh, distractors. So here's your six pictures at the bottom. And in the top right, in yellow are the six, uh, sorry, the eight, eight words. Please don't write in the chat box. Just make a note on your own of, the, of what you think the answers are. I'm going to give you a minute for this. And there's no prizes, it's not a test, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. I'm not sure, it really doesn't matter, but just, just have a think about the, the words and the pictures. <clears throat> Uh, Ingrid is saying she can't see all the words due to Peter's pictures, but on my screen, it's it's absolutely clear. So I'm not sure what the problem is there. Anybody else more clear on mine? So, okay, everyone's okay. Great, good. Chat box, picture number one. Which word do you think goes with picture number one? Just do number one. Sound, 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 sound. Yes, okay, let's have a look. Yes, yeah, sounds is number one. Okay, two is a very difficult one. Anybody get number two? Yeah, brilliant, well done. What about number three, another difficult one? Three is the brain, okay. So what about number four? What do you think about number four? The lady with her hand on her head. Complex, I've got process. Brain we use for number three. Complex lack of understanding, headache. <laughs> Hopefully she hasn't got a headache. Let's have a look. I've actually got messages, so I apologize if my picture <coughs> wasn't very good, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Number five is another difficult one. Key, 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 key. Great, brilliant. And so the last one must be number six, communication, communication. Okay, brilliant, well done. So in a minute, we're going to use those six words, sounds, ears, brain, messages, key, communication for another activity. So if you'd like to take a, a picture with your phone or if you've got a written note um, of the six words, uh, please do that because we're going to use them uh, in, in just a minute. So you need to write down or photograph sounds, ears, brain, messages, key and uh, communication. But just before we do that, let's think about what we've just done. Um, we're still... Uh, on the topic of listening. Um, previously, many of you mentioned that uh, one of your tips for teachers is to, for, for students, is to activate their schemata. In other words, to get them thinking about the topic, sort of pre-teaching, uh, pre-teaching vocabulary, um, the vocabulary that's going to appear uh, in the listening that students are doing. And uh, this is just an example from the new edition of IGCSE 
uh, English as a second language. Uh, a similar activity is the one that you've just done. You have a word bank with too many uh, words and phrases, and then you have, uh, in this case, five pictures, and it's a simple matching activity to get students ready uh, for, the next, um, for the next part of, of, of the listening activity. So remember the six words that we had uh, previously. The screen now, you've got three sentences um, about listening in response to the question, what is listening? Um, I've given you some clues with some of them, but again, please don't write anything yet. Don't, uh, don't write your answers in the chat box, just keep them, um, keep them to yourselves for a minute and have a think. Listening is receiving a through the B, and the C decodes these into meaning from D, and listening is E to all effective F. So please don't write anything, just think. <clears throat> So people are writing their answers. I don't want you to write your answers. Hold back, stop, 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 don't write. <laughs> stop it, stop writing. <laughs> Thank you, <Bob. laughs> You're a very naughty audience today. So, uh, listening is what? Listening is receiving sounds, obviously. Uh, and the way that we receive sounds is through your some teachers might say that some students uh, they receive the sound in this ear and it goes out of the other ear and nothing happens in between but of course the next part number two um, is, is the critical part um, for what really goes on in listening is the brain the brain has to stop it going in one ear and coming out of the other because the brain will take these sounds uh, and it will decode these sounds obviously into meaningful messages part is, uh, is not, not tricky, but listening is obviously the key to all effective communication, and which is over on the right. I'm sorry, I didn't have time to read all your answers in the chat, but I can see there's a, an enormous amount of, of, of answers and you've got them all, all, all correct. So that's absolutely brilliant. Well done. So maybe, maybe it's useful to uh, make students aware of what listening is, make students aware uh, that their brain actually needs to be doing something when they're listening in order for them to fully uh, understand and for them to be able to communicate. So you might want to use this yourselves, maybe a, an abridged version of it, an amended version of it. But, um, you know, there's nothing wrong in, in helping students to understand the theory uh, behind what we want them to do in the classroom. Um, here's a bit of research um, uh, done by Adler and, and friends. Um, the question of how much time uh, do we actually spend listening? And we're not talking about classroom here, but we're just talking in general. Um, we're trying to establish here uh, how important listening is uh, in, in, in relation to the other uh, language skills uh, that, that, that we talk about on a daily basis. So we've got our four um, uh, main language skills, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Um, and we've got 9%. So which of those four skills do you think takes up 4% uh, uh, of the time? Asha says listening. Listening, speaking, 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 listening, listening. To, so the, basically the oral skills. Okay, let's have a look. Actually, we spend uh, the, the least amount of time uh, on the skill of writing. So what about 16%? What do you think for that one? Uh, Fernando says reading. Reading, lots of people say reading, 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 reading. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, it is indeed reading. Yeah. So what about 30% then? A third, a third of our time. Uh, a couple of people saying listening, speaking, listening, writing, speaking. Yeah, it can't be writing because we've already had that. Let's have a look. It's actually speaking. So obviously nearly half of our time 
is actually spent on listening. And remember, um, you know, listen, listening is always going on around us, isn't it? There's, there's always sound around us. So even if you're not uh, making a conscious effort to listen, you're always aware of things that are going on uh, around yourselves. If you think about being in an airport, um, there's always sound going on. There are, there are announcements being made all the time around you. And you sort of switch off, but you're still half listening because you're listening for your flights. You're listening for an announcement, uh, you know, boarding now or flight delayed or whatever it might be. Uh, so that, so that, yeah, I mean, uh, Leila's making the point there's a difference between hearing and listening. But of course, we're constantly hearing and then we switch to listening when we hear something that um, is a particular interest to us. It's like listening to the radio or watching television, having something on in the background. That's definitely hearing. Um, but then we switch um, when, we, when we hear something uh, that we think will be of particular interest to us. Okay, so let's move on now to think about the principles um, of listening. There are many principles of listening, and today um, I'm just going to uh, talk about five of them. Um, on the screen, you can see uh, the five principles. Listen for ideas, not just words. Listen to the tone. Prepare yourself to listen. Wait and watch for nonverbal communication and remove distractions. So I'm going to read now <clears throat> five separate paragraphs. And for each paragraph, I'd like you um, to decide whether you think it's principle uh, A, B, B, or E. Can I ask you please not uh, to write any answers in the chat box, but to wait until I've uh, finished, uh, just so you don't um, uh, disturb other people with your answers. Okay, so here's the first one. This is the, uh, the first description, so you need to match it to A, B, C, D, or E. Focus on the speaker and try to put other things out of your mind. We're easily distracted by other thoughts. What's for lunch? What time do I need to be at a meeting? Is it going to rain? Try to concentrate on the messages that are being communicated in the listening activity. Next one. Focus on what's being said. Don't doodle. Don't shuffle papers. Don't look out the window don't check your phone, and so on, and avoid unnecessary interruptions. All these behaviours disrupt the listening process and send messages to the speaker that you're bored, distracted. Third one. The speaker's volume and tone add to what they're saying. A good speaker will use both volume and tone to their advantage to keep an audience attentive. Let these signals help you to understand the emphasis of what is being said. You need to get the whole picture, not just isolated bits and pieces. Maybe one of the most difficult aspects of listening is the ability to link together pieces of information to reveal the ideas of others. With proper attention, letting Distractions and focus, this becomes easier. And the last one, number five, gestures, facial expressions, and eye movements can all be important. We don't just listen with our ears, but also with our eyes. Watch and pick up the additional information being transmitted via nonverbal communication. Okay, so those were the five descriptions, and hopefully you've correctly matched them to the um, uh, five principles on the screen. And some people are put, putting their answers in the, in the chat box already. But just before we reveal the answers, let's think about what you've just done. Uh, this was not um, a listening activity uh, in order to answer comprehension questions. This was an example of an active uh, listening activity where you were actually having to <coughs> listen quite deeply uh, and to match content um, to, if you like, a paraphrase of what was in the paragraph. So um, the, the answers are coming in very quickly, so I'm going to just quickly reveal them. <coughs> 
but this was the order uh, that I read them in. Um, so it was actually uh, C and then E and then B and then A and then D. Four, three, one, five, two. I can see, yeah, yeah, lots of correct answers coming in. <coughs> yeah, brilliant. Okay, well done. So let's now let's now um, move on with the same activity, uh, but extend uh, the active listening uh, element. And what we're going to do now is listen again. And this time, I want you to write one note to the principles, and you can decide uh, what you think is the most important thing uh, about the content that you hear. Now, I've done the first one for you. Uh, the first one was C, prepare yourself to listen. And some of the key points uh, were relax, uh, focus on the speaker uh, and concentrate. So I'll just read that one again so you can get the idea. And then I'll read the other four and you just need to make a note. Not in the chat box, please. Just do this uh, independently. So here's, here's the first one again. Relax, focus on the speaker and try to put other things out of your mind. We're easily distracted by other thoughts. What's for lunch? What time do I need to be at the meeting? Is it going to rain? Try to concentrate on the messages that are being communicated in the listening activity. So I've actually written three things as an example. You just need to write down uh, one thing. So here's the second one, uh, which is E. Focus on what's being said. Don't doodle, don't shuffle papers, don't look out the window, don't check your phone and so on. And avoid unnecessary interruptions. All these behaviors disrupt the listening process and send messages to the speaker that you're bored or distracted. Okay, very quickly in the chat box, what words did you write? Focus on what's said, avoid distractions. Okay, brilliant, yeah, focus comes up again from Layla. Yeah, anything else? Focus again. Yeah, don't check your phone, avoid inter interruptions. Yeah, no doodling, no chatting. Yeah, okay, brilliant, well done, thank you. Okay, the next one. <clears throat> I'm not gonna write anything answers on the screen for this because obviously you're, you're, you're doing it very well. Uh, in the chat box. So number three, it was B. The speaker's volume and tone add to what they are saying. A good speaker will use both volume and tone to their advantage to keep an audience uh, attentive. Let these signals help you to understand the emphasis of what is being said. Okay, so for that one, mm -hmm. what have you got in the chat box? Okay, volume and tone coming up. Yeah, Mai says to pay attention and to listen carefully. Keep the audience attentive, brilliant. Yeah, volume and tone again, pay attention. Okay, excellent, good, well done. Right, next one, um, my number four, so this is A. You need to get the whole picture, not just isolated bits and pieces. Maybe one of the most difficult aspects of listening is the ability to link together pieces of information to reveal the ideas of others. With proper attention, letting go of distractions and focus, this becomes easier. So again, let's have a look. Yeah, get, get, getting the whole picture. Listen till the end. Yeah, whole picture, whole picture. Wait for all the information. I think that's really important. Ingrid says, wait for all of the uh, information. And Rasa says, listen for the, for the whole picture. I think sometimes students are too quick uh, to put their answers because they're not listening to the whole uh, picture. They're not listening for all of the information. Yeah, brilliant. Well done, everybody. So the last one, <clears throat> five, which is uh, D, gestures, facial expressions and eye movements can all be important. We don't just listen with our ears, but also with our eyes. Watch and pick up the additional information being transmitted via nonverbal communication. Once again, let's have a look at a few answers in the chat box. What did you pick up on? Yeah, all of the body language. Yeah, of course. Um, if students are listening to uh, an audio, then uh, they don't have any of this. But in live listening, live listening and speaking, then of course, all of these things are, are really very, very uh, important. Okay, great, well done. So those principles, I guess, sort of translate uh, into tips uh, that we can give our students. Um, and in the new edition, uh, there are countless uh, listening tips and opportunities uh, for reflection. If you just look at the green uh, box in the middle of your screen, um, this is getting students to reflect and to think about what they've done. What helped you to answer the questions in activity D1? What information did you focus on as you were listening? Would you do anything differently next time you hear a listening text to help you answer the questions more accurately? So these reflection 
boxes, these reflection um, uh, questions are helping students to build up these principles so that they do become uh, better listeners. So let's think about um, active listening and the relationship between the speaker uh, and the listener. So how do we show the speaker uh, that we're listening? Now, something that we've just picked up on in the previous activity, um, and you were, you were putting it in the chat box, uh, this, this idea of nonverbal uh, and, and semi-verbal signs. So again, just, just quickly um, in the chat box, can you give me some uh, more details about this? What, what should we be looking for? these non-verbal uh, and semi-verbal signs. Uh, I just saw in the chat box, yeah, the speaker's body language. Yeah, eye contact is coming in, nodding, nodding, eye contact, facial expressions, emotions, gestures, facial expressions. Yeah, all of these are incredibly important uh, to listening uh, because um, how the listener responds uh, to the speaker um, helps, the team, helps the speaker, informs the speaker uh, on the direction uh, of, of their uh, productive language. So just a few examples here, even things like smiling sends uh, a message to the speaker. Eye contact sends uh, a message. Posture, in other words, the way that you're sitting or the way that you're standing, you know, people who are slumped like this, uh, that, that's a very negative message uh, which you're sending uh, the speaker. Uh, mirroring, in other words, doing exactly the same when uh, the, the speaker might be, might be nodding, and so you nod, and, and it shows uh, that, that you're in agreement. But let's not forget, of course, um, that uh, nonverbal and semi-verbal uh, signs can also show that uh, you're not engaged, that you're not actively listening. Uh, if you look distracted, distracted, you know, if you're looking at your phone or looking out of the window, um, that's, that, that, that shows that you're not really engaged with what's uh, actually going on. So um, we've had a look at nonverbal and semi-verbal signs. Um, also, we need to consider echoing. So this is, uh, this is verbal, um, verbal signals now, echoing, repeating, uh, and reinforcing. And we're gonna have some examples of this uh, in just a minute. Uh, another element is when we clarify or, or we paraphrase in order to check check meaning, to check that we've understood something. Uh, a fourth one is reflection and paraphrasing uh, what we've heard, indicating emotion. And by doing this, we build up a connection with the speaker. We build up rapport. We build up empathy uh, with the person or, or even the people uh, that we're in communication with. And a final one is when we're uh, maybe not sure about something. So we ask a question uh, or we make a comment um, and this may help the speaker to expand uh, on their ideas, and it will help the, uh, the conversation uh, to go forward. So you're going to now listen to uh, four exchanges, and in each of these four exchanges, I want you to decide how the listener is showing that they are listening uh, to the speaker. And of course, you're going to choose from the four um, uh, ways of showing that you're listening that we've just been talking about. So you may want to just take a quick uh, screenshot or write them down. Match these uh, with the four little exchanges that you're going to hear in just a minute. So I'll just play them one by one and then we'll uh, check the answers. There's no distractors. It's a simple matching activity, uh, A, B, C, D to each of the four listenings. Okay, here's the first one. He was born in 1916. That's impossible. Did you mean 1960? That's our first one. Here's the second one. I was so hungry that I ate both pizzas. Both of them. And the third one. I think we should turn right. Why? It looks like a dead end. So let's turn left. I've been working late every day for two months. Really? You must be absolutely exhausted. Okay. 
So we had uh, clarifying, paraphrasing, we had uh, echoing, repeating, reinforcing, we had questioning, commenting, and we had reflecting and paraphrasing. So underneath the, the red boxes, our, uh, we have the, uh, have the answers. Um, I won't ask you to put them in the chat box, but you can check uh, as I reveal uh, the answers. So the first, um, the um, uh, clarifying and uh, paraphrasing was, was this example here. Maybe the, 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 uh, the speaker uh, mispronounced 60 and said 16 in, instead. So the listener said, that's impossible. Did you mean 1960? So this is, this is where we, we clarify something uh, because we're not, we're not sure uh, if we've heard uh, correctly. The next one, echoing, repeating, and reinforcing. Uh, I was so hungry that I ate both pizzas, both of them. So this is an example of where uh, the listener is echoing uh, or repeating uh, what the speaker has said, maybe uh, through disbelief uh, or surprise. Um, you know, there are different reasons why, why we echo or, 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 or repeat. Uh, the questioning and the commenting one, I think we should turn right. Why? It looks like a dead end. So let's turn left. So in this case, the listener is questioning uh, what they've heard, questioning a, a decision that's been made uh, and, and, and uh, questions and also comments. So that there's, there's a follow-up element here as well. The last one uh, was reflecting and uh, paraphrasing. I've been working late every day for two months. Really? You must be absolutely uh, exhausted. So here, the reflection, if you like, or the paraphrasing, paraphr there is no paraphrasing here, this is more of a, a, a reflection, um, but it means that the, um, uh, the listener is, is trying to build up a, a relationship, if you like, uh, with the speaker by, by showing empathy, uh, by showing that they, uh, they feel sorry uh, for a situation. Um, okay, some people have put their uh, ideas in the, um, uh, in the chat box, and that, that's absolutely fine. You don't, you don't need to post your answers. Okay, and in the new edition, uh, these are just some, some examples of, of the uh, listening which, which is going on uh, in, in the new edition of, of the IGCS English as a Second Language, and you'll see exactly the same type of strategies. So these strategies are reinforced throughout the whole uh, of the course book in the listening activities uh, which I've written. Uh, for students to work on and to help you to um, uh, help them with, with, with their active listening. All right, so let's have a look at some practical examples. Um, I'm sure that some of these you're very aware of already, but I think the, 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 what, what I want to point out more than anything is that active listening is not about listening and answering comprehension questions. Active listening is about listening and doing something with the content uh, that you're listening. So it goes beyond uh, simply answering questions. Um, all of this is, is very much task-based. <clears throat> so I've got six um, uh, to highlight to you. First one is what's the next line? What happens next? Uh, checking students' current knowledge, providing answers, students predict questions, uh, providing a list of points, then students listen and check uh, which ones are mentioned. And finally, uh, students read headlines and predict what happened and then listen to confirm or compare. Now, um, because we don't have an enormous amount of time uh, today, uh, I'm only going to do one as a real example. So you will be doing some listening, but only for one of these. For the others, um, I'll, I'll quickly uh, explain how the activities work. So here's the first one. Over on the right hand side of your screen, you can see uh, a conversation between um, two teenagers, Maria and uh, Christos, and what you need to do is to provide your students with a similar uh, audio script with one person's utterances uh, blanked out. You can easily do this using the, 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 the digital classroom. Um, so students read the audio script and they need to suggest uh, the missing lines. I think it's important to note here that we're not asking students to predict exactly what was said. And um, even if their predictions are not exactly what they're later going to hear, it doesn't matter. It's, it's understanding the context, getting the whole picture uh, that we talked about earlier. So students read the audio script, suggest the missing lines, <coughs> uh, with other students, uh, listen and compare. And as I said, there's no need for the 
um, exact words. So have a, have a quick look. You don't need to do all of them. Just maybe do one or two. I'll give you 30 seconds. Don't write anything in the chat box. Just keep it for yourselves. Uh, and then I'll play the audio from the, uh, the new edition. Uh, and you can check. Check your answers. Give you a bit longer. So I'm going to play the audio now. Uh, I, I won't play all of it. I just want to give you an idea of, of how this activity actually works. So remember what we've done here. We've taken an audio script from the book. We've blanked out some of what um, is said in the, um, uh, in the audio script. You don't need to blank out everything. You can just blank out two or three things if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Students predict what they think are the missing words, check with a partner, listen and compare. So let's, let's listen to a little bit so you get the idea. Here we go. Unit 1C, speaking, making suggestions and expressing preference. Activity 1. Hi, Christos. How are you? Hey, Maria. I'm really great. What about you? Everything's fine. Why don't we go to the shopping centre later? I want to get some new trainers. Yes, we could do that, but I'd rather go at the weekend. Can you wait until then? Oh, I'd prefer to go today, but I suppose so. Why? Well, I get paid for my part-time job tomorrow, so I'll have some money to spend. Fair enough. So, let's go at the weekend instead. So, I think, I think you get the idea. Um, lovely activity to do. Um, and, of course, you can, you can differentiate it by uh, blanking out more or, or, or fewer uh, gaps in the text for, for different types of students. But very, very easy to do. Uh, doesn't need an enormous amount of preparation, but a, but a lovely example of um, uh, engaging students in, in more active listening, which goes above and beyond uh, simply answering comprehension questions or, or, or the type of things that they'll see uh, in the examination. Uh, the next uh, practical example is something called what happens next. So uh, students will read uh, part of a text. Now this could be um, a reading text from the uh, course book or it could be a script and it's entirely up to you how you do it. Uh, students then predict what they think happens next. Um, it could be um, it could be a lecture, it could be a story, you know, you can, you can literally use uh, anything this, with this. So students predict what they think will happen next. Again, uh, give them an opportunity to share. And then finally, they listen to confirm. Now, if you decide to use a reading text, then obviously you would need to record uh, the part of the reading text that the students um, are not actually going to uh, read themselves. Um, if you use audio, then of course, you can just take this directly from the, uh, from the course book. Um, because the audio scripts are, are all reproduced at the back of the student's book. So again, no need to, to, to do an enormous amount of work. And if you're using the digital classroom, all of the uh, audio scripts are there as well. Checking current knowledge. Uh, another uh, nice idea for um, activating active listening. Um, give students a topic that they know something about. So not something obscure, not something that they're not going to know anything about. But something that they will have uh, some knowledge about. Um, and this is a bit like um, AWL that you might do uh, in a classroom, but this is uh, just uh, two columns rather than three. Uh, students write two lists, things they know about the topic and things that they would like to learn about the topic, uh, share with other students, and then <coughs> they listen um, and, and compare uh, their lists. Uh, with, with what they actually listen to. And again, um, just use what's in the course book. No need to uh, go beyond the course book. You don't need to search uh, elsewhere for, for more content. Everything is there uh, for you to use uh, in the course book. This uh, particular one, um, we provide uh, the answers to questions and students choose uh, questions from uh, options. So it's important that uh, we give them a topic. So here's a topic uh, in the box. Again, this is taken from the course book. This is actually a reading text, uh, but I'm uh, uh, adapting it here uh, to do it as a listening uh, activity. So listen to a talk about a man called Stefan Nowak, 
who lives on a boat on a canal <coughs> in London. And these are the original uh, questions uh, from the course book, which you don't give to the students because uh, they need to guess or predict what the questions are. So you're going to give them the answers to the questions and they need to predict what the questions are. So they write the questions to elicit the answers and then they, then they listen. And, and by listening, they're uh, confirming their comprehension of the topic, uh, but also uh, the questions and answers. Uh, a fifth one is providing students with a list of points. So take something from the course book. You as the teacher, you extract a list of key points and some points can be distracted. In other words, they're not actually in the talk. Students predict, first of all, which ones they think will be included uh, in the talk conversation, and then they listen and they compare uh, particular answers. So this is, this is if you like, a, a more challenging type of listening. Students often find it difficult to understand what key points are. So this is actually quite a, quite a good way of helping students to develop those, those skills of listening for main points, and which of course leads into, uh, in, into summary as well. Uh, one, uh, to have a look at is, is what I call headlines. Um, so provide students with headlines about the same story. Notice that it's the same story. So you can just, I, I made these up. I didn't get these from the course book or anywhere else. I just made these up. Um, notice that there's, there's a common element which goes through them, uh, which is United City. Um, I'm thinking about football, but it doesn't have to be football. It, it could be rugby, I guess. Uh, but it talks about match, red card, team. So there's a, there's a common thread going through all of this. So you give your students six or seven or eight headlines about the same story, and students need to predict what happened in the story. Now, um, they can predict the, uh, the story in any way that they want using any or all um, of the, uh, the headlines that you, you've given them. They're not necessarily in the correct order. Um, so it's, it, it's a great uh, discussion activity for students to do as well as um, it becoming a listening activity. So uh, again, we have the sharing um, uh, activity. And then finally, uh, students will listen and compare uh, or confirm uh, their answers. This, of course, also works incredibly well uh, as, a, a, as a reading activity. Uh, I'm just quickly looking at the uh, chat box to see if there's anything I need to respond to. Yeah, there's nothing there that I need to respond to straight away. OK, so we've had a think about what listening is, and we've looked at the principles of listening. Um, and we've also now just had a look at, um, at what active listening is, and we've looked at some practical examples um, <coughs> excuse me, of what act, practice, active listening is. So um, th that brings us pretty much to the end of what I wanted to talk about today. So uh, let's make our uh, conclusions for today. <coughs> On the right hand side of the screen, you can see the six pictures which we had. Uh, at the beginning, and hopefully you can remember the six words which were associated uh, with those six pictures. So in the chat box, can anybody give me a sentence using two of the words from the pictures on the right that we had at the beginning of the webinar? Let's have sounds and ears first. Can anybody give me the sentence? What did I say at the beginning about sounds and ears? Kanika says we listen through our ears. Okay, great. I think you get half a point, Kanika. Can anybody use, not, not brain, I don't want brain and messages yet. I just want sounds and ears. We hear sounds through our ears. Sound is received through the ears. Okay, now you're getting the idea. Let's have a look. Yeah, listening is receiving sounds through the ears. Okay, what's the next line? Who can read the next line? Kanika's gone on to the third one, but let's have the second one first. What was the second one? Yeah, the brain converts into messages. Brain processes the messages. Yeah, sound effects are amazing. That's good as well. The brain decodes its messages. Yeah, what I said was the brain decodes these into uh, meaningful messages. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Well done. This, this, this proves to me that you've been active listeners today. And you, and you haven't been distracted. And then the third one then, of course, was listening is key to all effective communication. 
Brilliant. Well done. OK, so you might remember something else we did at the beginning, which was to have this little three, two, one uh, activity. Um, and I'm going to ask you now, again, you don't need to write it in the chat box. You can if you want. Um, but just to quickly reflect, three things that you've learned uh, about active listening. What have you learned today about active listening? Think. Kanika says it's attentive listening. Yeah, absolutely. Ingrid, there are many forms. Yeah. I was talking about verbal and nonverbal, and also Akshaya saying, yeah, yeah, communication, engagement. Lovely. Okay. Again, you're, you're showing me that you've been actively listening. Body posture, remove distraction. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Great. Okay. So the next thing I want you to think about is <coughs> do things that you want to try out in the classroom. Hopefully, there are things that you can take from today and use in the classroom. Maybe today, if you're teaching today or, or tomorrow, next week. Specifically, ah, Kanika says the missing dialogue activity. Yeah, great. Thank you, Kanika, because it really is a lovely, uh, lovely activity. Elhan's talking about pre-teaching vocabulary. Absolutely critical, Elhan, to do that. Yeah. The in-text prediction. Yeah, prediction, prediction. Headlines. Zaina likes the headlines one. Prediction tasks. Missing dialogue. Brilliant. Okay, great. I'm pleased that you, you like those and that you think you can use them uh, in the classroom. And then my final one. Uh, one question that you still have uh, about active listening, and you can don't please don't type them in the chat box, but put them into the uh, Q and A box, uh, and then I think we've got maybe five or six minutes um, when we respond to some of your uh, questions. So that's that's all from me, apart from the Q and A. Thank you so much for being with me today, and thank you for being so interactive. Thank you for being brilliant active listeners. Thank you for all of the support in the in the chat box, all of your very positive comments. I really, really do appreciate it. So I'm going to hand back to my uh, colleague, uh, Julia, now, and she's going to handle uh, the Q&A. So I'm going to stop sharing. Awesome. Uh, thank okay. you, Peter. Over to you, Julia. Yes, thank you, Peter, for that excellent presentation. I'm sure our audience found it so useful, and I've been seeing all the chat comments, and it's been really great. So thank you, Peter. It is now time for our Q&A, so if you have any questions you'd like answered, please make sure you post it before the session ends. I do apologise in advance if I do mispronounce any names. But let's go to our first question. So our first question is from Fernando. He's actually asked a couple, so I'm going to blend them into one. Um, what is the main difference between passive and active listening and what is the biggest challenge in active listening, in your opinion? Yeah, I think, yeah, great questions. Thank you, Fernando. I'm not sure which part of the world you're in, but uh, um, yeah, really, really good questions. Active listening is, is, about, is about getting students to, to engage more with what they're actually listening to, rather than just simply answering uh, comprehension type questions. Um, because through active listening, we really are going to uh, develop students' abilities, uh, you know, to become to become better listeners. I mean, that, that's what we want to do with active listening. If we're just simply asking students to uh, to, to listen and answer a question, listen and answer a question, um, it's not passive listening. Of course, it's not because they are actually doing something. But there's a big gap between just simply answering comprehension questions. You know, the, you know, the gap is enormous, uh, and what we've been talking about in in our webinar today. So I, I hope that clarifies. Um, Asked for Fernando. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. So our next question is from Lakshmi. Can we consider Doodle as a method of taking notes? In that, can we consider the person is listening? Um, I'm not sure what Doodle is. What's Doodle? I believe, um, and Lakshmi, please correct me if I'm wrong in the chat box, just like doing little drawings. That's what I Oh, doodling. doodling. Okay, sorry. Yeah, doodling. Um, I think if the doodle is connected to whatever it is that the student is being asked to do, then I have I have no problem with that. Um, if a student, you know, wants to draw a picture to show they've understood rather than writing the word, again, I have no problem with that. As long as they, you know, it's the right picture, then um, absolutely. Because 
you know, listening is not about um, being able to spell accurately or to write accurately. Listening is about showing that you've um, under, understood uh, what, what's going on. Um, so I, yeah, I have, no, I have no problem doodling as long as it communicates whatever the, uh, uh, the message is. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so our next question is from Ingrid. Do you have any top tips for engaging teenagers? I did. I'd be a millionaire. Um, I, I think it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a really difficult question. It's a complex question. And of course, um, teenagers in South America are different from teenagers in uh, the Middle East, and they're different from teenagers in Asia. They have different likes and dislikes and uh, different emotions and different things um, engage them and motivate them. So you know, it, 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 it's not an easy question to answer, but I think, I think the key uh, to engagement is, is all about finding out what students uh, are interested in. Um, and obviously not all students are gonna be interested in the same thing. So we need to add variety to what we're doing in the classroom. But um, I, think, I think that's the key really is to find out what they're, what they're into what they like, what they don't like. And also you know, a second element I think is about personalization, make it relevant to me uh, as a teenager and not you know, a student in London on a bus, you know, who cares about that? I want it to be relevant uh, to me. So I think, I think those are two uh, elements that we should uh, try, to, try to include. Brilliant, thank you. So I think our next question could almost relate to engagement and keeping teenagers engaged. And this comes from Jade. So do you have any advice in helping learners to focus on being active listeners, especially for the lessons that take part um, during or near to the end of the school day? Yeah, I mean, obviously, by because, the, sorry, I can't remember the, the questioner's name, but yeah, I, I guess when you say towards the end of the school day, you, you mean the students are tired. Um, and they're lacking concentration. I think it's even more important that the, if you're doing listening, that it is uh, active listening and it is the type of listening that we've been talking about. Um, you know, the, the previous question about how do we motivate students, the same thing applies, um, make it relevant to them, personalize it, and, and hopefully it can be a topic uh, which will engage them. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so we now have a question from Dharmesh. To get the higher accuracy level in listening activities, what are the important steps to be taken care of? Um, I'm not really sure what you mean by accuracy. Do you mean getting answers correct? I guess that's that, that's that's what you mean. I th I think everything we've talked about today is about helping students to develop their listening skills. It's not about assessment. It's not about testing. Uh, obviously. Familiarity with the test, the exam, and what they're going to be faced with is really important, and they have to do practice. And you know, there's plenty of practice material available. There's practice material available in, in, in course books. So it is important that we expose students to that. But I think, you know, I, I come across examples of where um, students are being assessed in um, September, October, November, and they're not taking the exam till May, which which makes absolutely no sense to me. You know, those months prior to the exam, leading up to the exam, should be um, taken up with helping students to develop uh, their listening skills. And, and by developing their listening skills, they're gonna become better listeners. And then the knock-on effect, the impact when students are doing an assessment should be uh, greater accuracy. But if we spend too much time on assessing and looking for the right answers, then I think we're, we're wasting a lot of time which could be better used uh, on developing their listening skills. Thank you, Peter. I think we have time for one more question. So this comes from Mehdi. What is the transition stage from passive to active listening? Transition stage. Uh, I'm not really sure I understand the question. Um, I mean, I, I think in, in the classroom, students are going to be exposed to both. There, there, are, there are going to be times like when they're answering uh, comprehension questions, which is very much a one-way street, really. Um, but there also needs to be time for uh, active listening, um, where there's, there's there's more communication going on, there's more interaction. All of the things that we talked about, um, the the importance of showing interest and interaction and rapport and, and so on and so forth. 
So I, I'm not really sure I fully understand the question and the word transition, but um, um, hopefully that, that's given uh, some help. I hope it has.